Now, you've got some thoughts on uh, homelessness. We've got an ideas factory at 10 o'clock, and yep. the, the prospect being put up is to somehow use uh, empty office space as, as accommodation. Yeah. I, I heard um, the interview that you did with Major Brendan Nottle oh, last yeah, week, yeah. Uh, Neil. If, if I'm, I, th I think it's one of the most powerful interviews I, I've heard you do over, over a long career. It's, it's just a remarkable uh, piece of radio. Um, and... You know, I, I started thinking about that, and there are lots of ideas around at the moment. One of the things that worries me, though, is, you know, I think we need to coordinate efforts better. You know, we have people running off in different directions, doing different things, different service providers. I mean, we coordinate the service providers at the City of Melbourne, and that's been very powerful. So between us all, we know who those people are on the streets and, and how to deal with them. But this latest idea of using empty office accommodation uh, and doing sort of pop-up accommodation in it, look, it's worth looking at. Uh, and, and, but I don't want that to become an idea that just sort of slides away and doesn't happen. It's as if we need to bring together these groups and say, right, you know, you groups like Vincent Care and, and Winteringham, you know, we need you to go away and, and work on long-term accommodation options, which is going to take money. OK, here's a group with, you know, Rob Pradlin, who, who suggested it, uh, with Launch Housing, who've supported it. You're going to go away and work on this pop-up type accommodation in office buildings. OK, Salvos and Melbourne City Mission, um, we, we want you to work on this overnight accommodation that Brendan is offering up at the Hamadava Cafe. And I think there were 70-odd people up there yeah. last night and 80 the night before and these are people that otherwise would be on the streets all night but it's as if we need to say to each of these groups instead of us all pulling in different directions let's understand what each of us are doing and almost like work streams send them away to to do the work on all of it but you know i, I just get so frustrated it, it, it's a problem that i think is as bad as i've seen it we're spending more than i've ever seen on it and it's getting worse so uh, let me tell you this there's a young bloke down on Flinders street okay he is not homeless he has accommodation in dandenong now, why is he on Flinders Street? Because he begs for money, because that feeds his ice habit, so he's now camped on Flinders Street. He should be in Dandenong, you know, in, in suburb of origin, with services there, not, not Flinders Street. So, you know, there are ways that we have to deal with this that I think we can come up with, you know, some good answers. But I think it's going to require a coordination that we've shown we can do with the service providers, but it needs to be with all of these options as well. So what do you do? I mean, how do you bring all that together? I well, agree with you. There's an enormous amount of goodwill out there to try to do something. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, I think the other thing I've noticed is, and, and we've been talking about this for the last few weeks, I think it's far more noticeable now because it's not someone rolled in a blanket in a back corner somewhere. Yeah. It's an actual tent yeah. or a structure. Yeah. And that's what that's what we're seeing actually worldwide in terms of the way homeless people set themselves up. So, look, I, I'm going to talk to Martin Foley, the, the minister. He made uh, contact with me a couple of nights ago, and we've agreed to have a talk about it to see what we can do together to try to coordinate some things. Um, as I say, there's a lot of money in the system at the moment. I just want to make sure that it's going to the right sort of uh, services and we're not duplicating services. Do you need some sort of uh, structure to bring everybody together and sit them down and talk it through? Yeah, I, th I think so. And, and that's, I, I think, I, I don't want to talk fest. You know, we, we've had those. Yeah. We, we've got lots of expertise. We, we know about the different options. I think it's more like saying, okay, let's now coordinate our actions. So as I said, there's the group working on long-term accommodation. Here's the group working on temporary or crisis accommodation. Here's the people working on the overnight, you know, one-off sort of safe place, you know, uh, so we've actually got an end-to-end, -end, properly coordinated system between the federal government, the state government, ourselves at the city, the service providers, the philanthropics, the private sector businesses that are prepared to be a part of it. You know, but there's got to be something that says this is not about talking about the problem. This is about trying to organise our solutions to it. I hate to talk bureaucracy, but it's almost like having a commissioner for the homeless who can bring all this together. When We've got commissioners for children and various yeah. other things, which yeah. we need. And, and in fact, that's, that's not such a bad idea. If you think about homeless people, they, you know, we've got to get back behind the fact that they are homeless. And, and back behind it is the fact that people suffer from mental illness. Yeah. They have drug and alcohol problems. They've been victims of trauma or domestic violence. They, they've had some upheaval in their in their lives, which has meant that they, you know, they can't afford a house. Uh, so there are there are symptoms which we see on our streets, which we've got to deal with. But behind that, there are causes. And unless we get to those, we're just boiling the ocean. You know, we, we've got 240-odd people sleeping rough where it was 140 a couple of years ago, and that's even 
after we've put an extra 100 people through Brendan Nottle and Collingwood Football Club into Magpie Nest. So it, it's not fewer people, it's more. Yeah. And, and we've got to actually deal with it in suburb of origin. That young man, we shouldn't be dealing with him on Flinders Street. We should be dealing with him in his subject, you know, uh, suburb, you know, in, that, in this case, Dandenong. So, you know, it, the, the good thing is I think there's enormous amount of goodwill. I think there's, there are resources in the system. I think there's a great deal of expertise. And now we've got really good focus on it as well, um, not least because of that, that interview with Brendan, oh, Brendan but because yeah. of all sorts of, you know, different people so coming sad, together at this wasn't time. It? He was in tears. He said, oh. I'm failing. He's not and failing. He's being overwhelmed. No, that's right. And look, I, I saw Brendan, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, I saw Brendan in the street a couple of days later, and I think he, he was a little embarrassed about his very strong reaction. Oh. And I said, please don't be. You know, that, it's, it's a very powerful, profound message that you've sent out. And no, he is not failing. Um, but in a sense, we're all failing. All of us. You know, and, and that's why I say with all of this focus and all this attention, it, it's time, I think, to make sure that we are making the best use of every dollar and every hour that people are working. We will come back.